Warning, the SCP Foundation Audio Archive is classified. Access by unauthorized personnel is strictly prohibited. Perpetrators will be tracked, located, and detained. Rotbolt. Item number. SCP-1037. Object class. Instrument. Containment class. Euclid. Formerly safe. Special Containment Procedures. Updated. SCP-1037 is to be contained in a 40 meter tall vertical shaft at Site-19. SCP-1037 is to rest in the center of two trapdoors attached to the walls of this shaft. Material affected by SCP-1037 is opaque. This has been exploited by making the trapdoors out of transparent plexiglass. Lasers attached to the ceiling of a containment shaft will connect with the laser sensors at the bottom, strategically aligned near the edges of a shaft. If at least two laser sensors are unable to make contact with their respective lasers, i.e. the trapdoors have been converted to SCP-1037 affected material at a high percentage, the trapdoors will open, allowing SCP-1037 to fall onto the set of trapdoors below it. The affected trapdoors will then be delivered by automated system to the on-site incinerator. The containment shaft has one trapdoor set for every 0.5 meters. On average, SCP-1037 activates one trapdoor set every eight years. At its current rate, this containment system will be able to contain SCP-1037 uninterrupted until at least 2627 CE. In the event of a power outage, containment breach, or any other event that compromises the primary containment shaft's ability to contain SCP-1037, it is to be suspended in gelatin in a secondary containment locker until the primary containment system is repaired. Description SCP-1037 is an SAE grade number 7 steel bolt, of a type used in many buildings with a steel or concrete frame. It is made from a medium-strength steel alloy, consisting of 97.5% iron, 1.2% tungsten, and 1.3% unknown substance. SCP-1037 vibrates at a nanoscopic level, in a complex but structured set of frequencies ranging from 8500 Hz to 900 Hz. These vibrations are capable of crystallizing surrounding material into a visually identical version of the material of SCP-1037. Footnote 1. SCP-1037 affects all material, but affects non-biological material at a faster rate than biological material. In addition, SCP-1037 affected material, designated SCP-1037-1, vibrates identically to SCP-1037 leading to the exponential spread of SCP-1037's effect, as long as SCP-1037 remains in contact with it. Given m grams of material, the amount of material, r, at any given time, t, in days after beginning of sustained contact with SCP-1037 is given by r equals f of t equals m e to the exponent 833.2t minus 450.07 grams. However, SCP-1037-1 is much more brittle than SCP-1037 itself or its non-affected counterpart. Given enough time, structures made with SCP-1037 built in will collapse due to a lack of structural integrity. It is assumed that, given enough time, SCP-1037 would be able to convert Earth in its entirety to SCP-1037-1. This would represent an N0K class contagious material scenario and, judging by the exponential equation above, would occur if SCP-1037 was in contact with the ground for approximately 8 years. Discovery SCP-1037 was discovered in the estate of Dr. Cladius, a historian of some note studying artifacts in Eastern Europe and Northern Africa. After his expiration in 1875, 
a lawyer inspecting Dr. Clydeus's estate, found SCP-1037 along with numerous artifacts related to GOI-004, Church of the Broken God. SCP-1037 was found suspended in a container filled with gelatin, and at the time of discovery had converted approximately one quarter of a gelatin to SCP-1037-1. Interviews with Dr. Cladius's next of kin indicated that they had not been informed of SCP-1037's existence. SCP-1037 was originally contained by the American Secure Containment Initiative prior to its absorption into the SCP Foundation. Using Dr. Cladius's journals, the origin of SCP-1037 was traced to a secret chamber and a dig site in Egypt. The Foundation discovered several non-anomalous replicas of SCP-1037, with some attached to the end of long sticks, along with multiple bows designed to fire arrows. Thank you for listening. Intro music was from Punch Deck. You can find more at soundcloud.com slash punch dash deck. Level 2 patrons or higher can get early, ad-free episodes. Rating reviewing, and sharing always helps. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.